Our next speaker is equally as wonderful, um, an amazing lady, and it's been my privilege to, to get to know her, and she's done wonderful things for the School of Business and the University of Mississippi. She's been referred to as one of the most influential women in American sports, and if I may, I don't want to embarrass her, but I do want to tell you, you know you're big time when you have your own action figure at the store next to other action figures. And that's when I knew Dixie Carter was big time. Even though she's uh, a wonderful person and humble about what she does, I know you'll enjoy the great things that Dixie will tell us about. So please welcome Dixie Carter. I definitely drew the short straw uh, speaking right before lunch. We're running late following not only Liza, but Secretariat. So um, I really felt a lot of her speech, David versus Goliath, WWE is my main big competitor. I started out, she started out with $78. I started out funding my own company with a credit card, which I would not advise to do and I drive in to work every day and work with my husband. So um, I get all that. First, I feel very blessed to be an Ole Miss Rebel, and I know you guys do too. Um, so how many of you here know exactly what you want to do when you graduate? Very cool, a few of you. Well, I can assure you that as I was daydreaming out the business school window during class in a million years, I never thought that I would be running a wrestling company. Um, ever, never, ever. Um, how many of you here have ever watched wrestling or watch it now? Okay. Well, for those of you who don't, I have a very short video to let you know a little bit about what my day is like. To them, it's a dream come true, a vision realized, where they can entertain, compete, connect, and though they are characters on a stage, living out a fantasy, this is very much real. We are a real phenomenon. We are total nonstop action. Home to the world's greatest athletes, these larger-than-life personalities captivate through our own unique blend of drama, comedy, and action. It's the ultimate live event experience, a total fan immersion unlike any other, with exclusive unprecedented access before, after, and throughout the show. And then we take it to the world. We broadcast 12 live and themed pay-per-views a year and are Spike TV's highest rated program, presenting an original breathtaking thrill ride 52 weeks a year. But the action doesn't stop there. From the ring, to TV, to social media, our compelling stories unfold 365 across all platforms, providing unparalleled interaction with our sports entertainers. We are real people reaching your communities. Real athletes defying the laws of physics. We are real entertainment. T N A. Where the action. Where the action. Where the action never stops. Oh, it's real. It's damn real. So, not the journey I thought I was going to go on when I graduated from Ole Miss. I've never even dated a guy with a tattoo. 
Uh, so this has been a unique world for me. Um, so as president of this company, I am involved in everything from uh, negotiating television deals domestically, internationally, uh, talent contracts, uh, live event touring, the production behind that, uh, licensing, which are the action figures and the trading cards and video games, merchandise, and I oversee legal finance, um, marketing PR, and the new animal social media. And I bet something I said in there is what many of you might even be thinking about just parts of that for your career. Um, when I look back on my days at Ole Miss and all of the classes I took, so many of them actually touch little areas of what I do in my life today. And I like to think of college is a slice of real life before you have the pressures of the real world. Um, I hope all of you are getting uh, involved on campus. And how many of you have done internships? <clears throat> That's great. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. I think internships are critical. Um, it's a chance for you to get out there and see what you think about something before you actually dive in and have to do it as a full-time job. Um, I probably get dozens of resumes every single week unsolicited, and people are coming out of college right now with real-world experience. And you would think, how can you, for an entry-level position, compete with someone like that. People aren't just looking at grades or the fact that you have an MBA. They're looking for people who have taken that extra step to apply it to uh, going out there and finding a job. And I will also give anybody who has to fund themselves through college on their own, which I did not have to do, I think always deserves a shot, even though their resume may not look as full. Uh, I think that's important to give people like that an opportunity. Um, when I started off, I was very involved at Ole Miss, incredibly involved. Um, I actually booked wrestling at the Coliseum uh, and hated it uh, when I was on the programming board. But being involved here got me a great internship. And that great internship in Dallas uh, for an ad agency where I was in the movie promotions department got me my first job, uh, which was first day of work with Tom Hanks working on a movie he was working with, Jackie Gleason, um, Gary Marshall was producing, and I was like thinking to myself, now I get paid to do stuff like this? And it was really exciting. It was an opportunity. I still, at this point, didn't know what I wanted to do, but I know I wanted to do something in the entertainment field. I loved that. And I got to try a bunch of different things and had some great clients. But uh, I was a vice president of the company at age 25, uh, which back then was kind of a big deal, like by the youngest by 15. And those things didn't happen a lot. But I think today, those, those gender and those age, uh, they don't hold you back like they used to. You know, I encourage you coming out of school never to act like an entry-level employee. Think about if you were a director or if you were a vice president. And think like that from the very beginning. Have that confidence in a meeting. Don't just sit back. Um, and then I decided, you know what? I love the entertainment business so much. I think I want to start my own company. And I say like a bad country song, I packed up a U-Haul and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee and started my own business. I represented a ton of country music artists, a lot of music artists in general. Um, I represent a lot of professional athletes. I'm a huge sports fan and, uh, and, and did big events like the Women's Billiards Tour on ESPN, if you've ever seen that, and, and things such as that. And I loved it. I loved it very, very much. Was blessed to have a lot of great success uh, many of the attributes that Liza had mentioned, I don't need to say again, you all know those are the kind of things that you need to bring to the table. I got an opportunity to uh, pitch a new client that was starting out, and it was a wrestling company. And I remember thinking, do I even want to take that meeting? Is that something I would want to do? And my dad, who's incredibly successful, said, you know, I thought you were smarter than that. That's like a billion dollar industry. Why would you not at least take the meeting? Because again, you know, how do we think about it? Is the path 
that we think we're going on, or do you open yourself up to a path that you might be taken on? And so I took the meeting, and I gotta tell you, a bunch of big tattooed people came in, and I'm a little biased. I mean, like, I judge people, I'll just admit it. I do judge people. And I've learned not to as much through this, but they were the most wonderful people. I'd worked with a lot of celebrities, and I've never met people that were nicer or harder working. And so I took it on as a client, and I became more and more involved. Two years into it, I was named president of the company, and I was holding on to my little company with my fingernails. I didn't want to let it go because that was my freedom and what I started, but I realized I needed to let that go and concentrate full time on wrestling. So my journey absolutely was not what I thought it was. Never would I think I would be in the wrestling business, much less playing myself on television and much less playing a bad version of myself on television, which we call a heel in the business, and am quite hated, so I'm very good at it now. Um, but what will your journey look like? You know, I hope that you will not settle. You know, there's nothing worse than settling for less than what you deserve or what you can become, because I'm here to tell you, you guys are a lot smarter than I was, and I'm doing pretty darn good you guys should aim so high. I would recommend, honestly, if you can't get into something you really love and are passionate about from the very beginning, I'd rather see you, Ken may hate when I say this, take a job as a waitress, go to a company you wanna be in, go to an industry you wanna be in, offer to work a month free, blow their doors off, and create a job that they cannot let you leave. And what's the worst thing that happens? They let you leave, you walk into another place, and now you have a month's worth of experience under your belt where you had nothing before. And I just think that you have to take advantage of every opportunity. Contacts are key. I mean, we all know that opens doors that just a resume may not. So take advantage of them. It's only gonna open a door for you. It's up to you to kick it down and make them remember you. But what's so exciting to me, I mean, I'm, I'm jealous, like I'm jealous that you guys are still students at Ole Miss, and I'm jealous that you have this great blank canvas in front of you, just waiting for you to create what your masterpiece is gonna be, and don't have regrets. I mean, success, like all things in life, takes a lot of hard work, but it's not going to fall in your lap. Uh, you're going to learn a lot of things from books and classes. I can tell you, do you not think once you've had an internship, the pages come alive a lot more and you think about it differently, right? I, I mean, I remember, I mean, I, I kind of snored through some classes, you know? And, but then once I had an internship, it made me think different. And it really changed my whole perspective. And I wish then I had more years of school in front of me once I started that. Um, but right now, you're shaping the kind of business person you're going to be. Are you the kind that sits back in class and doesn't say a lot? Are you really focused? Are you driven? Um, are you a leader in class? Are you driving strategic thinking? Because I think right now, whether you realize it or not, you're going to look back and you're going to see the foundation of who you're going to become playing itself out right now, and that's really exciting. So I want to ask you, so what do you all think are some great attributes through the century, I mean, through the you know, decades, let's just take the last 150 years, great leaders have come out, and they always say, this is what I think, this is what I think really makes you successful in business. What are some things that you guys think are absolutely the most important attributes to have to be successful? Great. There you go. Very good. We, what's that? Integrity. All of these are absolutely critical. But I'm going to tell you what I think is really, really, really important. And that is imagination. Because if you can't dream it, you can't make it happen. I mean, every single day in every meeting that I'm in, I'm having to imagine new ideas, imagine ways 
to get our fans. Imagine strategies to connect with our marketplace more, to grow our business. And if you recognize the importance of creativity, I promise you it will make a difference. So very simple, I won't hold it, very simple question for you. You look at this right here, right? How many apples are on this desk right here? One. Anything else? What's that? If you use this apple to grow a bushel, to grow an orchard. But I mean, so much is what we just, we look at this and we smell it and we taste it and what we know is real is, is how we look at it. But there's an infinite supply of apples if you use your imagination. And it's not just to become an orchard owner or a multi-million dollar orchard owner. Just think of all of the things that you could do if that happened. Imagination is really key to business success. You have to believe it and conceive it from what is not necessarily right in front of you. You have to believe that the impossible can become possible. And your business success will come when you imagine outcomes that seem absolutely unrealistic. I mean, you can go back to the inventor of the telephone. I mean, all of your great inventors, the car, the plane, I mean, it's, these were all conceived in these people's imagination. But our world today is changing faster than it ever has before. And there is one little reason for that. This little sucker right here. This is changing the face of business. I read somewhere that a teenager with a smartphone has more instant access to information than a genius did of a decade ago. And that's just 10 years. Things have changed so fast. And I bet no matter what field you want to be in, whether it's banking or finance or marketing or management, you're going to be dealing with this new technology and what it means. It can also, the downsides of it, it can make you lazy and it can do your thinking for you. It can even be your enemy. You need to know that everybody who's potentially looking at you for a job is going to be looking you up in social media these days. They're going to be looking at what music you listen to, what your friends look like, are you like drunk out of your mind in pictures, or do you look like there's, I mean like we used to look at resumes and you had to go with a 30 minute meeting, a gut feeling on somebody. And today, because of technology, we can find out so much about the people that we're going to be hiring. So I really encourage you to think about that. Think about what you put out there that always lives, no matter if you take it down, and what that says about you. Because that's a really important part. But it's also something, in general, technology, that can help you create and imagine. Social media is here to stay. I mean, in what you're thinking, have you ever thought about the implications of social media today? We, for the first time ever, people can find out information. They have a voice, and they use that voice mostly in a negative manner, you know, because that's just the way people are. When people used to write a letter to a company, very few times do people take the effort to say how wonderful an experience was. It's a lot easier, right, to fire off a letter about how unhappy you are about something. This makes it super easy. In 140 characters, I can tell you a lot of stuff. And I hear it all the time. But I think what you're going to have to learn is how does social media, how are you going to use that in your imagination to do things for the industry that you come into that you've never imagined before? Um, it's really changing every single thing about business. And these new tools combined with your imagination are going to take you anywhere you want to go. So on this journey, as you go, the last thing I would love you to really think about, too, is what kind of leader are you going to be? You don't have to be president of a company to be a leader. You don't have to be 
dean of the business school to be a leader. But leadership is a really important aspect of success. I was lucky enough, um, you all know Sparky Reardon. Um, yes? By the way, I thought this was the Sparky Symposium, and I'm having dinner with uh, the Chancellor and Ross Bjork last week in uh, Nashville, and I said, I'm speaking at the Sparky Symposium. And Dan Jones looked at me and goes, they're going to name everything after him in the next few years. So anyway, uh, I confused him, and, and now I know why. But I was elected into a leadership class that he had uh, when I was a senior. And it's something that really changed my life. I do, I do dozens of interviews every week, and a lot of times I'll talk about this. For our final, he brought in, I'm going to date myself, like a big old VCR machine, you know, and, and a TV. And we watched the movie It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. It's a Christmas movie. I don't know how many of you have seen it. And he asked us to watch the movie. And then he asked us to write a thesis of how are we as a leader and how would how we have led our lives up until this point, how many lives would we have changed? How would things be different had we not been at that point that we are right now? And then he asked us to think about, well, how do you want it to be? How do you want, when you look back at your life, and I can tell you guys, I'm going to say it, I'm going to tear up, your, this, this journey of life is going to go by in a blink of an eye. And you're going to look back. And what kind of person and what kind of mark will you have left? Be a great leader. Motivate. This year in particular, in the next couple of decades, they're going to be over in a blink of an eye. I hope you hang on to this school with every ounce of your fiber and being that you take advantage of every great opportunity that it has. I know when you sit in things like that, you're ready to get out and go to lunch. And when you're sitting in class sometime, you're thinking about your date or that football game or how you're going to dinner with somebody. But it goes by so fast. Enjoy it. Take advantage of these great opportunities. And don't be afraid to chase your dream or a crazy idea. I was at Sparky's uh, retirement this summer. I don't know if any of you were there, but there was a story he told, and it was of a recent old Miss graduate who came to talk to him about this great job offer that he had been given. I think it was in Memphis, and it was selling jet fuel to maybe FedEx. Very solid, very solid opportunity. Great benefits, great salary. And, and Sparky's like, that's great. And he's like, I could do that. He said, yes, you can. He said, or I could go to New York and I've optioned this book from this friend when I was in, in, in preschool and I can make movies. And he said, get your ass to New York. And I just think of that. And that man was Tate Taylor and he directed and wrote the movie, the screenplay for The Help, which was nominated for an Oscar in, in the Best Picture category. He could have so easily taken that great, safe job and probably done a wonderful job at it. But I just encourage you to dream and to dream big. I mean, who would have thought that kid would be walking the red carpet at the Oscars? You know, I never saw myself traveling the world and, and talking in front of 10 or 15,000 people all the time and, and doing all kinds of crazy things. But this is a great opportunity. No one ever, ever, ever achieves great things in business playing it safe, not taking risks. So believe in yourself. I know this university believes in you. I hope you pay it forward and come back and participate in this. But your potential, just like your mind and your imagination, are limitless. And I wish you all the very best and luck in your futures.